Welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be doing a full service myself on my 2007 Suzuki GSX-R600. But before I start, let me just give you a quick rundown of the reasons why I'm doing this today. Well, I've only owned this bike for around a month now and I'm super happy with it, but recently I've noticed there are some drips of oil coming out from underneath of the bike when it gets hot, which isn't good. So of course I want to get this fixed ASAP because I don't want the risk of oil going onto my rear tyre when riding. And I don't really want the oil leak to get any worse, of course, either. After doing some research online, it turns out that older GSX-Rs suffer from a common water pump issue which, which can cause oil and coolant leaking from a small weep hole which is located in the centre of the water pump. What normally happens is the seals inside of the water pump will begin to fail over time and the water pump is designed to basically stop the oil and the coolant mixing together I believe. Another quick check I actually did was just put a blue glove on and just put my hand at the bottom of the water pump just to see if that oil is coming from that area and you can see clearly it is coming from the middle of that so that tells me i have got that common issue next step i needed to start looking into getting a new water pump replacement for my bike but to change this both the oil and coolant will need to be drained from the engine and the radiator at this point i decided i was going to get my bike fully serviced using the best parts possible just so i know as a new owner what's been done and when so when I was at work the other day, I actually found out that a work colleague of mine had a Suzuki GSX-R600 K7 and it was an Isle of Man TT edition just like mine. He knows that I was about to do the service on my bike and he thinks the water pump's the issue too. So he was actually kind enough to give me his Haynes manual that he used to use to do the servicing on his bike. So I'm going to flick through this, just have a little general look of what I've got to do. And I'm also just going to use my general knowledge from pretty much just servicing my own cars on the channel, which you can see in the past. So just a note for you guys before I do get on to the next step. I'm not actually a professional mechanic of any kind. I'm just doing this as a side hobby. This is actually my first time doing a service on this type of bike. So I'm hoping I don't mess it up and I hope you guys don't mess it up either. So just take your time just like I am and everything should be okay. Right, let's move on to the goods that I've bought. Well, you can see I have a nice selection of products here to install on my bike today. All of this stuff was actually researched online and I tried to make sure I got the best recommended products possible. So starting in this box, this is the brand new water pump replacement. Now you can actually rebuild the current one with new seals and stuff, but I thought this being a 2007 model, I think it's just best to replace this to brand new and then you know where you are with it. Moving over to this side, I've gone for the 300V 10W40 motor oil. Over this way, this is genuine Suzuki super coolant, so it's very long lasting, all season type engine coolant pre-mix as you can see. And over here, I've gone for a decent k &N filter. You can't go wrong with k &N, as you know, the quality is just right up there. So I did also order a k &N oil filter too, whilst I was at it, and then lastly, I've gone for some NGK Iridium spark plugs to do as well. Now moving over this way, a few more things to help with the job today. I've bought a brand new paddock stand, which I've never owned before, never even used one, so I'm hoping it's easy enough to use. I imagine it is. I've also bought some new spark plug sockets, so when you do the spark plugs, these pick them up very easy. Normally you get ones with like rubber bits inside, but these are magnetic, so they're much better. Over here, I've gone for a brand new oil sump plug and crushed copper washer. You don't need to get this, but I'm just doing it for a peace of mind because I don't know the condition of the one that's already on there. I guess it's fine, but who knows? And then I've gone for some red rubber grease, which you'll see why I've bought that later on in the video. Again, with some copper grease and some KNN air filter oil spray, which I don't think I'm gonna need because I think this filter is actually pre-oiled, but I might just put a light coat of this on anyway. You'll see why I'm using each one as we go along. So now I've shown you guys what I've got, let's move on to job number one, and that's preparing the bike. Now that the bike is secured on the rear paddock stand, the next thing I need to do is remove the side panel. To do this, there's several different Allen headed bolts and clips you need to remove, so I will have to show you as I go along. The top three that you can see fairly easy, you need to remove all three of those first. Now I'm not sure what you call these, I think they're like crash protectors, so if you drop the bike they basically protect the panels from being broken, but you need to remove the cover on the front face anyway if you do have these fitted to your bike that is, and there's a hidden 18mm bolt inside that he's removing, then the whole thing should come away. 
Next, if you move down this way, there's another Allen headed bolt. Just go ahead and remove that one too. Now we need to come around to the front of the bike under here because we need to remove this underbody panel. To get this off, you need to take off the four plastic fixings, which I just use a screwdriver and poke the middle bit through, then they just fall out. Then there's two Phillips screws that's holding on the front bit, and then you should be able to unclip the panel and remove it completely from the bike, like so. I started to give the panel a bit of a wiggle so I can see if it would come away, but I did notice at the bottom there's a bracket and another fixing that needs removing. So I had to lay on my side there just to remove this. Once you've removed that last bolt, just give the panel a bit of a wiggle and it should just come off the bike. So that is the bike secure and the panel is now removed. The next step we need to do is start to drain the oil, but before we do that, I need to start the bike up, let it get to a reasonable temperature so the oil gets hot and thin, that will help it drain out easily, and then we can begin to do the change. So I did actually ride my bike down to where I'm doing this and you can still see it's currently running at 47 degrees so I won't need to run my bike too long. So whilst the bike is getting up to temperature just grab yourself something you're going to drain the oil into. So I've got myself this black oil pan here and whilst we're in this area I'll just show you quickly where we're going to be draining the oil from. So you need to remove this sump bolt just here. I'm not sure what the size socket is just yet, I'll tell you guys in a second. But yeah, that's what you uh, loosen off and then the oil will come out. But we need to turn the bike off first. Right, okay, so before we drain that oil out, we need to undo the oil cap. So if you come around to the other side of the bike, we need to undo this here because push all of the oil out a lot easier. So I'm just going to go and put this on my table. Like I said a minute ago, we're going to undo this bolt here. That looks to me like a 17 or an 18 mil socket. Oh no, it is an 18. So an 18 mil socket is what you're going to need next. And I'm just going to crack that off now. Then we're going to start draining this oil into this tub just here. Just a little note to yourself. Put some blue latex gloves on or whatever color, it doesn't really matter. Just to protect your skin because you don't want hot oil to go onto it. So I don't know how tight this sun bolt's been put on, but they shouldn't be majorly tight, but everyone does it differently. So I'm just gonna let the bolt drop into the pan because I've got a brand new one. And there we go. So let's let that drain out. To be fair, the colour of it doesn't look too bad, but I don't know how long this has been in my bike. I haven't actually long owned it, so just for a peace of mind I want to do this. Right, so we're going to just leave this to drain out for a while, and we're going to move on round to where the oil filter is. So where the oil is draining, if you just come over to the left slightly, literally just here between the manifold is where the oil filter is located. Just grab yourself a oil filter tool if this is on tight. I'm gonna go and grab mine in a second out of my drawer, just in case. To remove the filter, you need to be turning it anti-clockwise, um, and then it will unscrew. So just bear in mind as well, when you do remove this filter, more oil is gonna fall out of the engine itself and the filter, so it's gonna drip onto the manifold, which you can clean off with like um, braking clutch cleaner or something like that. Normally, I would like do a little trick by putting tin foil over this manifold, let the oil drip onto that, and then I would just screw it up and put it into the bin. It's quite a good little trick, but I haven't actually got any with me today, so I am just unfortunately gonna let it drop onto the manifold, and then I'm just gonna have to do a bit more cleaning at the end. So that's the old oil filter off as you can see. So you can see the part number on this oil filter, it's HF138, but I've got a K&M one to go on, so um, we'll get to that in a second. Now at this stage, if you were just doing purely an oil and filter change, I would start to put the new filter and all that stuff back onto the bike, but because I've got a water pump issue, I do need to drain the coolant out, which is gonna be my next step. So I'm just gonna leave everything as it is for now, let the oil keep draining out. As you can see, it's just slowly 
still dripping into that pan and I do need to clean up all of this on the manifold at the end. But uh, yeah, we're gonna move on next to draining the coolant out of the radiator system. So just reading through the Haynes manual, I think I need to take the other panel off of this side now because to drain the coolant, you need to get to the cap, which is on top of the radiator. You can see I can drain the coolant from this coolant hose here off the water pump, but um, to flush it out, I do need to get to where that pressurized cap is, which is just in here. So I may need to just take this side panel off quick and then we can begin to start draining the coolant out. So now the panel's off, we can begin to remove the pressurized cap. Just grab a towel or something I normally do just to uh, make sure the coolant doesn't go onto your skin. Just gently like, unscrew it until it's completely off. Mine shouldn't be too bad because the bike's cooled down quite a bit now. I'm just going to pop the cap on my table for the moment and then we'll go around to the other side. Back over to the water pump, you can see you've got this bolt just here. This is where the coolant will drain out from and it's your, also your bleed screw. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to crack this off just to show you what happens and also I need to remove these two pipes so all the coolant will come flowing out of this. I haven't actually got another tub to drain the coolant out into which is really annoying because I like to separate the oil and the coolant together so I can recycle it easier at the recycling centre but I'll have to figure that out later on but I'm just going to drain it out into the oil because the whole lot's going anyway. So uh, yeah let me just crack this off you and we'll pull these two hoses off. To remove this grab yourself a 10mm socket. Now the coolant's drained out of the hoses, what I need to do next is flush out the radiator of all this green coolant that you can see that's still coming out. I need to make sure that's completely clear because I don't want that contaminating with the coolant that I've just bought. What I'm going to do at this stage is I'm going to put the new oil sump bolt and the new oil filter on the bike because I don't want to get any coolant around those areas. And then I'm going to just pop the cap back on the radiator and move the bike over to where I've got access to clean water. Then I can begin to flush the bike. So this is the new magnetic sump plug with the copper crush washer, as you can see. There's your little magnet in the middle, so just to catch any metal filings that's inside of the engine. Um, if something was to be going wrong, that's what that will be catching. So I'm going to go ahead and just pop this back on now. Down to where we took the old one off. I'm literally just going to put this on hand tight for a minute. Like I'm just going to grab some braking clutch cleaner and just clean off that particular area. It just gets rid of all of the old oil. What you can do now is grab the ratchet, which is going to have a 14mm for this type of sump plug bolt that I've got and we're just going to nip this up so that's tight there i'll just do another quarter turn there that's it do not over tighten this bolt ideally you should follow the haynes manual spec and do the exact newton meters but unfortunately my torque wrench has just decided to pack up on me which is really annoying and it's too late it's in the day now to go and get another torque wrench, which ain't cheap anyway. So just by experience, I'm just gonna go by hand and just nip them until I know they're crushed enough. Now moving on down to where the oil filter is located and uh, we've still got the excess oil. So I'm just going to clean that off again with brake and clutch cleaner. And then I can go ahead and fit the new KN filter hand tight, which is what you should do anyway. You don't need to put the oil filter on mega tight either. So just bear that in mind. 
So grab the new KNM filter or whatever filter you've decided to buy. And what you want to do is pop a bit of oil around this sill. But by the look of it, KNM has actually pre-oiled this filter for me. I don't know if you can see that. So I shouldn't actually need to put any on there. It's actually quite a bit. Some people like to put new fresh oil into the filter, which is probably what I'm going to do. And then you pop the filter on, screw it in. Just be careful you don't make too much mess. Uh, then I can clean up the area that I just said. And then you can begin to fill up the fresh oil into the engine. Okay, I didn't realize this oil was this color, to be honest. So that's quite a bit in there. I'm not gonna overfill it, but as you can see, it's dropped down into the filter because when you put the new oil into the engine, it's got to like push through all the way through to where this filter is located. So you're just kind of helping the bike out a little bit by doing this. I'm gonna put a bit more in because the level's just dropped. Right, so let's go back to the bike and screw this back onto it. So I'm just gonna dry off this oil filter and I'm just gonna give it another half turn and that should be more than enough. So that's half a turn there. So that should be completely fine. That's more than enough. So what I'm gonna do now is just clean up the manifold using the brake and clutch cleaner. There's no risk of that going inside of the engine now. So you should see it evaporate pretty quick. And that is the oil filter on, the sump plug back in, and we can now begin to pop the fresh oil in if we want to, but I'm not going to do that just yet because I want to flush out the coolant. So but what I will do for the time being is just pop that oil cap back on the other side that we took off at the beginning of the video. So let's do that now quick and then we can begin to put the pipes back on the old water pump and we're going to flush it through until the clear water comes out of that bleed hole. Let's pop this back hose on first, only loose. Same with this one. And we're gonna take this bleed bolt back out again now and flush out any of the green coolant in the system. Yeah, I'm just gonna push this through the radiator now. Let it come out of the other end. You can see now that's beginning to become clear. And I just noticed you've got a little expansion bottle next to where the radiator is. I've just filled that up to the brim, but I think you only need to fill this up sort of halfway with the fresh coolant, I believe. Just drain this out as well and give that all a good clean. So I'm pretty happy now with that being flushed out. That's definitely clear as anything, as you can see. And uh, we need to begin to start taking this water pump off next. But first, I just need to clean this bottle out that I was just saying about over here. Okay, so on the back, you can see the low and full level. So I guess you just keep it just below the full. Uh, let me just flush this out again. Okay, so that looks pretty damn clear as well. I'd say that's done. So I may as well put some fresh coolant into this bottle now and um, then we can take the water pump off because the coolant shouldn't go through the system if this is like screwed back to there. So it shouldn't be able to go anywhere. So I'll just do that now quickly. Ah, so this is blue coolant this time, which is a good job I did flush the green stuff out. Okay, I'm just gonna check the level. Ah, perfect, just about on full. Right, the bike's back on its paddock stand. So we're gonna now attempt to get the water pump now off of the bike. So you can see there's just a few bolts over here and possibly these two. And I guess the whole thing will pull off. So let's do that now. We're gonna have to remove these two pipes again. Like 
so these two top and bottom are cross heads but I'm, ah no you don't need to undo those so you don't need to undo these because that's just holding on the front cover so i think it's literally just these two let's try that okay eight mil ratchet we'll do the left side first there's a shaft that this attaches to and it can get a bit stuck. Um, I think we've got to use two hands. There's a bit of play there as you can see. Give it a bit of a wiggle up and down. So I've just actually took those other two bolts out of that housing. There was a bolt in the middle of this. Um, I don't know if you're supposed to do that or not but I've got two hands behind because this has been an absolute bastard to get off the bike. Give it a wiggle up and down, and now it's decided to come away. Um, you can see all of the crap that's built up around that, so I'm going to just quickly clean that up now because I don't want that to go inside of my engine. Just a little bit of a quick investigation with the old water pump. So you can see on the end you've got this shaft which needs to like connect to another bit inside of the bike which we'll get to in a second but see this seal here you can tell it's failed because there's a gap all the way around now if i turn this pump around this way can you see that little small weep hole just here don't know if you can see that in the camera or not yeah you can yeah just there so that's where the oil is leaking out from as you can see then it's going past the seals and then it's leaking onto the floor so that's what i'm guessing is happening here um, yeah, this does not look like it's even worth repairing to be honest with you So I'm so glad I did make the move to buy a brand new water pump But some people don't they like to strip all of these seals out take all of this apart Just rebuild it and pop it back in which is completely fine, but I got this for quite a good price New so I wasn't too bothered So this is the new one. I hope it's exactly the same Just need to do a bit of a comparison here So that way, bear in mind I have taken the other half of the housing off this one, but that's what we're looking at. Um, the shafts look the same, the pattern all looks the same, the seals look nice and new. So yeah, I'm not going to move anything from this new pump, I'm just going to try and put it directly on. So before I do, I'm just going to show you exactly where this is connecting to, and then we'll go ahead and pop this on. So back down to here, you can see there's the shaft that the water pump needs to connect to. It's quite hard to get the camera to focus. Um, but yeah, you can still see all this sludge all around the edge. I do need to clean that off, but I think I'm gonna put the water pump in first and then give this all a good damn spray because I don't want anything going inside of here for definite. So yeah, let's get the new water pump on. that's definitely on now you can see that the edges have bucked up to the face um, so you know that shaft now is completely engaged with the water pump so I'm gonna go ahead now and put the original two bolts back in that hold this on if that shaft wasn't connected properly I'd imagine when you start the bike up and you put your hand on this if that feels cold you know something's wrong or if you hear like a really bad noise which which I'm hoping we don't have but I'm pretty confident that is engaged properly with how it should be because you can kind of feel it by hand what it's doing and you can see the faces buck up again with each other so I'm pretty happy with that so we can now pop the two coolant hoses back on I'm gonna start with the back one first Now that's done we can move on to the next step which is going to be adding in the new fresh oil into the engine via this port just here. So 
So this measuring jug is a one and a half litre measurement. So I'm gonna put the first one and a half in and then we can refill it just to the one. That's our 2.5 plus what's in the oil filter. So that should be the right amount that needs to go into the bike. that's the 2.5 litres of engine oil now added into the bike we can pop this cap back on now I'm just gonna bring you down to the inspection window again quickly because you can see that the level is pretty much near the top which is exactly where I wanted it when you start the bike up to let it warm up um, the oil will push through to the engine and this probably will drop just below the inspection window once the bikes cooled back down we need to put a bit more oil in just to top this back up to pretty much the top end of this window. So let's move on to putting the coolant in, then we can start the bike up and let everything run through. So the next step we're gonna do is add the coolant into the radiator. Now just remember, I've added fresh coolant into the expansion tank already. Now just a note, if you are gonna do a coolant change to your GSXR, just remember I've bought pre-mixed coolant, which means I can just add this straight into the radiator without calculating any ratios of any kind. If you've bought something different and it's not pre-mixed, please make sure you know which ratios to mix the coolant with before adding anything into the bike. Don't think the camera's gonna be able to pick it up. I can just about see the coolant now through the radiator. It's not quite at the top yet. So what I'm gonna do now is start squeezing all of the coolant hoses around the water pump area and start pushing all of this air out of the system. And then what we need to do is undo this screw again on the water pump and that should push the air out. Then we should be ready to start the bike up. You can see the levels dropped, which means it is pushing the air up and the coolant sinking more into the system, which is good. So let's crack off this lead nipple. So that should be all of the air out, that looks pretty consistent. Just pop a little bit more coolant back into the radiator and then that should be in. So that should be about right, I can see the coolant level in the perfect place, I'm going to pop the cap back on. Right, so off camera, I've just blasted the entire bike underneath with some motorcycle engine degreaser and also some brake and clutch cleaner. So if there is going to be any leaks, we can now clearly see where they're going to be coming from, but fingers crossed there's no leaks. Let's get this bike started up. By the way, I think you need to make sure the oil pressure light pretty much goes off when you start the bike too. If it doesn't, then there's an issue somewhere. I'm going to try and do this one-handed. So that means the oil pressure is good. So we just need to let it get up to full temperature now and then we'll turn the bike off. I'll just bring you back to the inspection window. You can see the oil's now disappeared, which probably means it's probably just sitting under this line just here. So when we turn the bike off, we'll fill that back up. It's now on 56 degrees. I think it needs to get to sort of 104, I think it says in the Haynes manual, something like that, before the fan kicks in. Good thing though, no leak so far, which is uh, telling me that was what the issue was. Just another thing, separate to servicing, you've probably heard it before, but this is the rectifier, which is normally located in front of the radiator. Apparently these get issues because of the heat, so people get like a relocation bracket, which is what this is here, and mount it behind so it keeps it away. Um, I didn't actually do this, this came with the bike like this, um, which I'm very happy about because I was going to look into doing this myself. If the oil pressure light didn't go off, if you did your own service, what I would probably do is check you've done that oil filter up tight enough and also the sump plug. 
probably more the oil filter. If that's not done up enough, it would lose pressure. But um, you can see I've got no leaks. My light's gone off on mine, so I must have done it correct. We're at now 72 degrees. We're getting there. Can definitely feel the heat off the radiator now. Yeah, the water pump's very nice and hot now, so that's good to know. It's working. It's doing its job. Also, did you notice there's no smoke coming off that manifold because I gave it a really good clean down with that braking clutch cleaner. It's one of the best things you can use to be honest. Another thing I have noticed though that I do need to get serviced on my bike is these fork seals. They're not looking that great and there is a light bit of mist oil coming off of my forks. So I'm going to have to get these taken out somewhere, get those changed because I don't want that to burst on me when I'm riding. Common fault again, it's just what happens, especially where I live, all the road conditions the way they are but uh, I'm not sure how much that would cost probably a couple of hundred I would imagine so the fans just literally kicked in you can probably just about hear it and that is at 104 degrees just like I said so we'll let that stop and then I'm going to turn the bike off so you can see the temperature's dropping back down it reached 105 now it's starting to creep back down because the fans kicked in there you go we'll let that stop now so let's turn it off good stuff no leaks whatsoever so I'm very happy about this like I said the oil in the inspection window has now disappeared so it's probably just sitting just under so we let the bike cool right down now um, we'll top that back up and um, the coolant should be okay because like I said I did the bleed screw and then topped it back up but what I will do with the coolant is, is leave it for a few days and then I'll come back to it when it's completely stone cold, check the level again, and then if it needs a little bit more, I'll just chuck a little bit more in because I've got quite a lot spare. So I've just had to bring my bike into the garage a minute because the weather's just decided to change and just started to rain. So I'm just gonna let that pass and I'll try and get the bike back outside if I can. But now the oil, the coolant, and the water pumps now change, we can move on to the next step, which is changing the air filter and the spark plugs. Again, I've never done this before. So I've just had a little flick through the Haynes manual and I think the first thing I need to do is take off two bolts, one from each side to get the seat off. Then we need to lift the fuel tank to get to where the spark plugs are and where the air filter sits on the top. So let's begin taking those out and we'll go from there. So that's the seat off. Apparently I need to remove these side panels too. Um, I think they're just Velcroed on, which is a bit strange. Just pull them. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. How random. Um, so I've done that top bit. It's just a clip. Oh, yeah, you slide this out so I shouldn't have done that I've just snapped the clip that was my fault ah I'm gonna have to order another one of these now so don't do what I just did it's velcroed on there and I think you've got to slide this panel that way so a bit of velcro that one's completely snapped anyway so someone else must have done that in the past to be fair I might be able to repair that with something else okay next I think I need to undo this bolt here and this tank will lift but apparently according to the Haynes manual there's a rod that's inside this back bit how the hell you get this off I don't know I don't know if it's just clipped on or what um, so I'll have to figure that out so uh, yeah let's have a little look this might sound a bit silly but this rusty washer that sits on the fuel tank I just removed has been bugging the living shit out of me since I've owned this bike. Just seeing that on the fuel tank just really annoys me. So um, that would be one of the first things I'll be changing when I put this bike back together to a brand new one. So the next thing we need to do is remove this rear panel, which is where the passenger seat normally goes. Off camera, I was just trying to put my fingers under this and start yanking it upwards, thinking that it just clips in and it's not even moving. 
So I just had a little flick for the Haynes manual and I didn't even realize if you come underneath of the bike to here, it's actually a lock to put your key in, which should release this panel just here. So I'm gonna just try that a second. Please be bloody attached. Ah, oh, and it works. Ah, okay, so just learned something new yet again. Now that's off, there should be a rod inside to hold the fuel tank. Ah, yes, here. Ah, cool. So I guess this tank should lift up. So looking at the pictures where you need to put this rod, you actually need to put it into where the stem is, but I've got my quad lock on there, so I may have to remove this first. That's my quad lock now removed. I've now got the fuel tank up in the air with the rod, as it says to use it in the Haynes manual. So you put it through the stem bit here, and then you've got like a little piece of the rod which holds the tank up out of your way. So now we've got access to where the air box is and the spark plugs are underneath of this. To get to the air filter, we need to remove the electrical plug in the middle. We need to remove these two relays out of the way. I think there's another breather hose over here, which we need to pull out. And you've got several screws all the way around this air box, which we need to take out too. So that's the next job I'm gonna do. Then this cover should just lift away. done all of the screws around the outside of this box and it's still not quite coming away so I just had a little look in the Haynes manual and apparently there's actually another hidden one in the middle of this hole there we go right now that's removed you can see we've got all the lovely trumpets and this is where the air filter sits so we should just literally need to just pull this up and pull this out like a normal air filter. It's a bit tight, oh, there we go. And that looks absolutely minging. Hey, that looks like that has been in there for quite some time. So this is why I'm happy I'm doing this service because like I said, sometimes paperwork and what people say isn't always true. I actually thought this was recently serviced and that filter definitely says otherwise. It's absolutely minging. Good news is inside looks all pretty clean. I'll give it another clean anyway. So the air filter has done its job. Now before I put my air filter into the bike, I need to remove all of this outer tray now to get to where the spark plugs are. If you were just doing an air filter change, by all means you, you would just literally put your new filter back in and just reverse the process. And that's job done, but I need to do the spark plugs. So reading in that Haynes manual again, I think I need to undo a pipe which is down here, another breather pipe, a few other little things, and this should then come away. So this next bit doesn't look like it's gonna be very easy, but through this gap, I'm trying to get my screwdriver, there is clamps on the bottom of those trumpets, and there's four of them to get to. In the Haynes manual, it says that these are supposed to be Allen heads, but I think someone else has replaced these with cross heads and probably changed the clamps by the look on it. So this is either gonna be easier or harder to get to. There is a little gap here in the frame. You can put the screwdriver through and that goes directly to the first one. So that one's fairly easy. I can't quite, I don't know if you guys can see that or not where that screw head is, but that's the first one and that's undoing already. So this one's pretty easy, but getting to the two middle ones and the other end, I'm not so sure. Um, I apologize, I can't give you a better view. It's just so tight to try and show you, but just literally follow the bottom of the trumpet and you can see there should be a clamp which is holding this outer tray on. So once we've got those four off, I think it's just 
this top bolt here and then this whole entire thing should pull away. So I've loosened off all four of those clamps and I'm just gonna use a 10 mil socket just to undo this last bolt at the top. Hopefully, this should come out once I've taken this last hose off the bottom. Okay. Move the electrical, electrical wire out of the way. And here we go. So I'm just gonna flip this box over for you. These are the four screws that I was trying to get to. That I said was an absolute pain in the ass. I think from factory, these are actually Allen head bolts, but you can see someone's replaced these with cross head bolts, which I think the reason they've done this is because it's easier to get different size screwdrivers down to where you need to. So now the air box surround is completely removed. You can see we've got the throttle body assembly, which we're not gonna get involved with today. And down here is where your spark plugs are gonna be located. So these are your coil packs, which connect to the spark plugs. Now, some people disconnect all of these, I guess, and unscrew every single old spark plug and then replace the new. I mean, that's fine, you can do that. But I like to just take one hour at a time, do a little inspection check on the coil itself to make sure there's no oil or anything else on the coil packs themselves. I'm just gonna pull this first one out here, do a little inspection, take the old spark plug out, and that's when my new spark plug tool will come in handy. So this is the first one, you can see, nice and dry, which is good news. All looks pretty good. What I will do when I pop these back in is I will put some red rubber grease around these edges. Um, that's something I've always done just to make it easier for next time. You don't have to do that, but I like to do it and it just makes things easier to pop back in as well. So yeah, let's get the old spark plug out. Now off camera, I've been really struggling to get the correct size ratchet extension to where the spark plug is, but I've managed to figure it out now. So what I've done, because you guys are probably going to have the same issue unless you've got the exact sized straight extension to get down there, which I haven't. So I've got 150 mil extension here and I've got a 90 degree sort of adjustable knuckle attached to that with the spark plug tool on the end. So that's how I get those out. Now I've got the first one out, I'm going to tell you exactly what I do next before fitting the new spark plugs. So going back to the coil packs that sit over the top of the spark plug, you remember I said that the tops are pretty dry. Let me just come round. So you can see how dry they are at the top. Now what I like to do is put a little bit of red rubber grease, like I said to you earlier, around the tops, which I'm gonna do now. I'm just gonna pop that grease in there a second. So just put a pair of gloves on and I just pop some of this around where this like sort of seats. You don't actually need like loads put on, but it's just enough to make this pop off easier next time you do a service. There's no harm in doing it, to be honest. And loads of people online do this. Um, I like to do this myself. Now that's put on, what I do is just grab some electrical cleaner and just blast that through there, let that dry out, ready for when we put this back on. So I'm just gonna pop this on my table out of the way for now, and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing to the other three. Now what I like to do next with the new spark plugs, you don't have to do this, but it's so worth doing because this can affect many things with your bike, the way it runs, fueling, whatever, and that's gap checking the new spark plugs. So what I mean by that is the tip of the spark plug to this like other bits that's like above the tip there's a gap between the two and this needs to be 0.7 mil I actually am a inspection engineer for my everyday job so what I did was I took all of these to work gap checked them they're all absolutely spot-on and then what I like to do is just pop a little tick on the box to say that I've done that so that's the part number as well by the way if you do want to order the exact same ones as me but yeah, all of mine are 0.7 mil. Like I said, if that gap is wrong, that can cause quite a lot of different issues, believe it or not. It can lead to like really rough idling. It can lead to bad fueling problems. Uh, many other things as well. You can like search it up online if you want to really get into it. But 
just for a peace of mind, just do that gap check and um, you can go ahead and start fitting these straight into the bike. So let's get this first one in. Repeat the same process I've just shown you with the other three and that should be the spark plugs done. Oh, another thing I did forget to mention quickly is I like to pop a little bit of cop grease just around the top sort of area of the threads, not down the bottom, just the top area. Again, this is just to help the spark plugs come out easier next time you do a service. There's no harm in doing it. Many other people do it too. Just like I said earlier with like the oil filter and stuff, exactly the same with the spark plugs, I just give these a slight little nip and that is literally it. Shouldn't need to over tighten anything like this. Now we can pop the coil pack back in and that's the first one done. Just don't forget to plug the electrical plug back on, onto the coil. Right, not good news, I've actually come across an issue with getting this job done. So the new spark plugs do fit into the cylinders as we know and, and like I just explained I did the gap checking and the length is all fine as you can see. However when I try and push this back onto the top of the spark plug it's not seating properly like it was before. And I don't know what's stopping it so I've just literally put the old and the new spark plugs together to do a comparison and this is what I found. So you can see the old one at the top has got like a nice thin thread at the top which pushes nicely into the other part and this one has got like a much thicker sort of diameter which is preventing the coil to engage with it to seat properly so what I'm gonna have to do luckily the old one has a part number CR9E because I know these definitely work and they're completely fine what I'm gonna do is just pop home now order another set of four I'm just gonna have to wait for them to arrive to finish this job off so there's nothing else I can do right now, so let's just skip to next time I'm down to my unit. And I'm back. You can see I've got the bike back up on the paddock stand. We're outside again because it's dry enough. Ignore all this on the floor, that's from last time. It's currently 8.40 in the morning, so I did get up pretty early just to get on with uh, this job today. And I've also got the new spark plugs to hand, which I have already gap checked, but I can quickly just take one out of the pack just to show you how I do that quickly. So this is one of the new spark plugs out of the box and this is a 0.7 feeler gauge. Now what should happen here is the two points of contact between the tip and this top bit, it should just about grab at 0.7 and you can see that's perfectly just grabbing just there. So that's correct. I've done the same with the other three so all four are ready to go straight into the bike. Normally I do actually use a different type of tool to do this. I'll put a picture on the screen of what I normally use. I just haven't got it to hand right now. It's an actual spark plug gap checking gauge. What I'm gonna do now is just quickly put some copper grease around that top edge again, just like I explained before. And let's crack on with getting these into the bike. is the spark plugs now fitted. I'm glad everything's gone back together okay. Before I move on to the next step, which is gonna be fitting the air filter back into the air box housing, I do want to put some red rubber grease in the internal diameters of those. So when I put that back in, that will like look after the rubber condition on the box, but also just make it easier to pull off of these cylinders when I next do a service. Once I've done that, I want to do some general maintenance spraying and cleaning in this kind of area. I also want to spray some electrical cleaner into some of these plugs to make sure they stay good condition. Then I need to pop some oil back into the engine because if you remember the level dropped just below the inspection window. 
Also need to check the coolant. Once that's done, there's just like general maintenance spraying I need to do in some of the areas. Anyway, once the maintenance side of it's done, I'm gonna pop all of the panels back on, just reverse the process pretty much, and then we'll take this out for a spin, and fingers crossed, everything's gonna be okay. And finally, we can get onto fitting the new PNN filter. So this should be pre-oiled, like I said, but what I'm gonna do is just pop some of my PNN filter oil spray over the top two, just to make sure it's extra protected. There we have it, so that is the bike fully put back together now and it's looking super clean now. I've done all the panels and all the engine, etc. I've just started the bike up because I haven't actually started it up since I fitted the new spark plugs. So um, it's starting on the button as it should and it's sounding sweet as a nut as you can hear. So what I'm gonna do now quickly is go and chuck some motorbike gear on and I'm gonna take this for a little spin so you guys can hear what this sounds like. And when I stop, I can just check underneath the bike to make sure there's still definitely no leaks. So I've just literally finished cleaning my bike up. I take the bike out and now it's uh, bloody raining. Anyway, take a little listen to the sound of my bike. Just, uh, just to give you a little bit of information, this has got an aftermarket exhaust pipe on it and a quick shifter. So I use the clutch for first and second. And then as long as you've got the uh, throttle open, you don't need the clutch look. Just, sounds amazing. Just gotta go a bit careful because these roads are very greasy. It keeps on raining got no heat in these tires whatsoever so I better go a bit steady it's quite windy today too so I'm hoping that's not ruining the sound quality I've put my mic quite high up into my helmet so Hoping it's covering the wind up enough. I'm just going to turn back round at this junction because it keeps on.
that's just low revs. There's nowhere near what this thing's capable of. It just sounds so good. So I'm very lucky where I live because I'm just surrounded by countryside. So you've got loads of decent twisty roads, straight roads. So it's a bit of a mix really, which makes you enjoy the bike more. This bend just here, this is a pretty good bend when it's a nice hot dry day to joy lean in the bike round. But like I said, it's quite wet today. I've got hardly any grip on these bloody roads. Careful around here, you've got a lot of loose gravel on the road. for a couple of reasons. The first one is I cannot see anything out of my visor because it keeps chucking down with rain. And the second reason was just to do those checks to make sure there is no leaks. And the good news is there's nothing at all. There would have definitely been oil by now. So that tells me that was the issue, which I'm very happy about. There's no risk of oil going onto my uh, rear tire or, or the oil leak getting any worse. So thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed the sound of the bike too. I do have some more modifications to put onto the bike, so keep an eye out on my channel for those. Until then, I'll catch you in the next one very soon.